right, all right, all right. Hello, hello, and welcome to the I Shine Podcast. I am your host, Angela A. Love Lewis, and I am super excited to be here tonight to look at my special guest who's over there just glowing, glowed up, honey. Listen, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Get the cameo look like, yes, honey. <laughs> So I am super excited. I want you guys to share the broadcast, tag some people, let them know we are on because y'all know when we bring people onto the iShine podcast, they are here to talk about something and you're going to learn something that's going to help you, whether it's personally or professionally to be the best that you can be. And so tonight, trust and believe we have someone on here who is making waves up in this place. She is all over. When I read you the bio, you're going to be like, how does one lady do all those things, right? But she is out here making an impact, being an influencer. And she is bringing people all over the planet to her platforms to give them visibility, to help them to keep their crowns on and to lead well, right? So I have none other than Jacqueline Kaba Harrison. I'm going to read her bio, but Jacqueline, before I do that, how are you this evening? I am wonderful, Miss Angela, and thank you for having me on. Absolutely. I would not... Um, want to be doing anything else this Thursday night, but to sit here and talk to you and listen to all the amazing things that you do. So I'm going to read your bio and then we're going to get started on some conversation, right? <clears throat> so Jacqueline is a licensed clinical social worker in the state of Michigan since 2003 and a practicing social worker since 1994. So that lets you know, honey, she has expertise in that area. She really knows what she's doing, right? Over the years, she has learned her role is to serve as a catalyst for change. And listen, that's important, y'all, because a catalyst for change is somebody who's out here, you know, being a conduit to help facilitate what you need to do to get to that next level. We can't stay where we are. So a catalyst for change is important. She's a confidence and success coach. So we know we need that. And she uh, created Realizing Your Potential LLC to empower and inspire African-American women everywhere. Her focus is empowering and inspiring African-American women to know better and be better for themselves, uh, their families, and their communities. Her work is about getting African-American women to recognize and harness their power, to empower themselves and others to manifest abundance in their lives. And y'all know we need abundance and we need to have it manifested, right? So I'm, give me a second. I'm going to bring in uh, Matthew Santana Jr. here. More specifically, she helps coaches and consultants create effective strategies to eliminate negative self-talk and self-sabotaging behaviors that prevent them from taking their business to the next level. She speaks on topics such as how to create unshakable confidence for entrepreneurs, how to stay motivated for entrepreneurs, increasing productivity in your business for entrepreneurs, how to eliminate negative self-talk for entrepreneurs, and developing an effective mindset strategy for success. Jacqueline, listen, that right there, honey, I know is super important. And when people are... Um, in their business, operating in their lives, they need all of those things because that is what keeps us from moving and being successful. So to take it on further, additionally, she provides a virtual platform for entrepreneurs to receive personal, professional, and leadership development to help them scale their business. She is the executive channel producer of a Queen's Roundtable channel on the Women Win TV network, which is the fastest growing all women TV network, right? She's the host of a Queen's Roundtable quarterly symposium, TV show, and podcast. She has taken the virtual stage for Black, Bold, and Beautiful Girl Boss Tour, Level Up Summit, Power Up Summit, Girl Be Courageous Summit, Ambitious Women Crowned, I Am Enough Clubhouse Summit, the League of Extraordinary Entrepreneurs Summit, Ambitious Moms Summit, World Voice League Summit, Women of Impact Leadership Summit. Come on, Jacqueline, baby, and then list all those uh, credentials, honey. Yes. She was selected to speak at the Leadership Experience Tour in September at the Embassy Suites in Troy, Michigan with Sean Fair. So listen, we know Sean Fair is doing his thing. So that's an amazing, amazing thing. Jacqueline's also been featured. She's a keynote in the Keynote Magazine, Courageous Woman Magazine, Swag Her Magazine, Women Who Win 
win women win network digital magazine think seven figures kk connection magazine success women's conference fierce and focused partner 2022 huff post on talking business with beverly morning show uh she boss talk and many other live shows and podcasts oh my gosh she's also the visionary for a new book anthology titled born to lead awakening the leader within she believes this anthology will help many women transform their lives and now she's residing in michigan with her husband and 11 year old son so on top of being a mom a social worker of a wife and running all these multiple businesses jacqueline i'm surprised that you were still up with us tonight and so we're laying down taking you a good good nap me too <laughs> We just talked about that too. <laughs> yes. Listen, I love it. I love it because <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's something to be said about pursuing your passion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you pursue your passion, it opens up opportunities such as what you've been able to take advantage of. Being in magazines, being on magazines, hosting podcasts, being on podcasts. And you know, I'm all about visibility. I know that if you cannot be seen, then who's going to be able to support you and follow you and tap into what you have going on. And so um, even though I read all of that, People think that because you have it all in your bio, they know you, but they don't really, really know you, know you. So Jacqueline, I want you to kind of share a little bit about who you are and what you feel like God has brought you to this place and this space right now to do. Wow. So a little bit about me. I I never sit still. Never sit still. <laughs> Look, really? <laughs> I think we got that piece right. Right. <laughs> so I actually, I mean, I love, I love women's empowerment. I love mm -hmm. empowering women. And I'm a social worker or a licensed clinical therapist. And the reason, just over the years, actually seeing, I, it was one common thing, which was the lack of self confidence. Yeah. Right that I would see over and over again. Because really, it doesn't matter who tells you, oh, you're great, or you can do this, or you can do that. What really matters is how you feel. Mm -hmm. How you feel about yourself and your ability to be able to create whatever whatever business, the, whatever whatever your wildest dreams are, right? It really right. matters. That's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. Because if you really truly believe you can do it, you're not going to stop until it gets done. Mm. And then some. I don't care how many hurdles you jump over, how many people, you know, throw obstacles in your way or throw shade or, you know, uh, try to tarnish your reputation. Mm. You know, how many times you fall down, it doesn't matter. If you truly believe in yourself and you're walking in your purpose and you believe in your vision and what, you know, what your assignment is, mm -hmm. you're not going to stop. You're That's not gonna stop. That's and, and you know what? I'm telling you, like with this book, this is actually, I've actually been a part of two other anthologies mm -hmm. and they, and they, they all went left or they both went left. I mean, like a hard left. Okay. Wow. So I'm saying all that to say, you know, like I could have been just like, oh, you know what? Well, maybe just this whole book thing isn't for me. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, I, maybe I just need to kind of fall back on that. Just kind of forget that all together. But I was like, you know what? I'm doing this book. I had to do my own anthology, <laughs> right? Right. And, and right. At first, it's like I said that, and I was like, "Wait a minute," because I, I was kind of jokingly saying it, and I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna do my own anthology." Mm. You know, so here we are, right? Born to lead, awakening the leader within. But kind of going back, and I know sometimes you might have to wheel me back in, but I knew for some years now that that was what I was meant to do was yeah. to empower other women and especially African-American women. And I say African-American women because when you're talking about confidence, you know, there's there's so there's so many other things um, that are particular to here in the United States that mm -hmm. we experience as African-American <clears throat> women that may be different than our sisters growing up in the Caribbean or our sisters growing up in the UK or growing up in Cameroon, Kenya, South Africa. You know what I mean? The experience is different. Right. You know, so that's, you know, so 
but I, I, I know that we all share a lot of commonalities. And a lot of that is tied to our to how we feel about ourselves. Absolutely. Just in general, how we feel about ourselves. So I, you know, I truly, I mean, I get so inspired when it when we talking about women's empowerment and you know, uplifting one another and you know, mm-hmm. helping helping in any way that you can, helping uplift other women and helping them with visibility. I mean, I, I love it. Like I said, I'm exhausted right now. I'm just keeping it real, I'm exhausted, but you know, this is this is what I this is what I feel like I'm meant to do. So yeah, so but you know, it's such a blessing, and I'm glad you shared that because sometimes your passion will it can drain you, but it can um, energize you at the same time. You know, and you're you know you're doing it, and you're getting up early, and you're staying up late, and you're. Uh, putting that time in because I look at Matthew down there uh, uh, yawning too but you have to show up in order to get the mission accomplished so Matthew mm-hmm. I know that you were shaking your head and grinning earlier so whatever you want to uh, 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 contribute to what you know Jacqueline has already said or whatever you want to add to it please feel free to do that I'm just going to say if y'all haven't met or connected with Jacqueline whoo, y'all missing out y'all need to go ahead and reach out to her because it's going to change your life it's a whole different ball game over there once you connect with her. And I can tell you that myself because I'm doing it. I'm working with her now on a few things. And it's just an amazing experience. You're going to look at everything in a whole different light because she's going to guide you and show you a different way of looking at things. Let's go ahead and connect with her. You won't regret it. That's a different way of looking at things, right, Matthew? Because I just be. <laughs> you know, we were just talking, you know, when it comes down to, you know, really getting your dreams out there, really having the confidence and the success that you mm-hmm. seek. Because a lot of times, you know, being an entrepreneur, when you're trying to pursue your passions, it can be really hard because, you know, whether it's lack of financing, whether it's, uh, you know, lack of time, lack of support, lack of uh, help, you know, to get the mm-hmm. things done, you have to really kind of pull on uh, a lot of different things inside of you, you know, determination, um, grit, you know, uh, commitment, consistency, all those things. And what I love about you, Jacqueline, is that no matter what, you consistently show up. And not only are you showing up, but you're bringing quality people because right now we're talking about what you have coming up this weekend, which is the Queen. Um, the uh, Queen's Roundtable Leadership Edition of the Symposium. And you just mentioned about the anthology, which is, of course, talking about leadership. So let's talk about it, because at the end of the day, leadership, uh, I think uh, John Maxwell says everything rises and falls on leadership. So when you think of that, that means that you've got to make some moves. You've got to be sometimes the, the, the front runner on things that maybe you don't always see the end of the, the game. You don't know how it's going to go, but you have to start moving, start walking, start leading and trust the process. So what are you wanting people to walk away with by attending the conference this weekend? I want, and this is specifically for women, mm-hmm. um, women, of African-American women. So what I want women to walk away with is to know that they have inside of them whatever they need in order to manifest whatever they want to in their business, just in their life in general, but we're focusing on business. Right. Okay? Um, entrepreneurs and helping them scale, helping them to basically, because a lot of us want to shrink down. Mm-hmm. You know, and Angela and, and, and Matthew, I know you guys coach people, and isn't it very common that a lot of women they, they don't really wanna they don't wanna come out to the front, you know they wanna kind of stay in the back. Oh no no, I'm, right. you know I'm just gonna stay back here. I'm gonna do my little thing back here in the mm-hmm. corner, you know. And in addition to that, they don't even wanna celebrate any of their accomplishments because I like I know I was always taught growing up that to be seen and not heard, you know. Correct. Mm-hmm. And how oftentimes there's a lot of negative, negative ways people describe women in leadership or black yeah. women in leadership in particular. Mm-hmm. You know, she's bossy. Um, you know, who she thinks she is. She always run around trying to tell somebody what to do. Mm-hmm. She's loud, and, you know, all of these, all of these negative. And I, you know, and I'm pretty sure if I sat here and thought about it a little bit longer, I can throw some more at you. I know, I was getting ready to say, when you started with the B word, I thought you was going to say another one, because you know, they put it out there, but you, you did bosses, so that's all right. <laughs> you, you're right, 
you hey, we get it. You know, you're being yeah. angry, being, you know, everything that it takes sometimes, you know, it when you're trying to accomplish a goal, sometimes people don't know what all it takes and to get the thing pushed through because it's a lot of women, like you say, who don't have the confidence or feel like, you know, they don't want somebody to say, oh, you think you're doing all that. So they'll tend to play down their mm -hmm. skill sets or play down, you know, what they can accomplish. And it's really a disservice because nobody else does that. Men can go through and make things happen and nobody cares and they don't care if you say it or mm -hmm. not. But they're still going to do it. And for women, I guess, because we're maybe it's because we're nurturers, maybe because, you know, we always feel like we have to take care of somebody else and be concerned about their feelings and all of that. But at the end of the day, you've got to get to a place where the end goal and the leadership process is more important than the people that are standing in your way or looking in from the outside, you know, thinking that they know better. Yeah. And it's just like, what is that in us? Like it came up in one of the exclusive interviews that if there's a job, let's say there's a job for a director. Mm -hmm that a woman will look at look at that, that same advertisement mm -hmm. and it might list, I don't know, 20 things on there that they were looking at the ideal candidate would have. Yes. So if a woman, we feel like we have to check off every single every thing single on that one. list before we apply. And mm -hmm. even then it's kind of like, oh, well, I don't really know if, you know, if I can really do this. Whereas a man, he can, out of those 20 things, he could have 10 of those things on there and he still applies for that job. Yeah, he can have two and be like, I'll figure it out when I get yeah, there. I'm, <laughs> I'm on the fence with that one. Right? What you got to say about it, Matthew? I go through every one and check off my list. Oh, okay. I got to make sure I'm qualified for what I'm giving people. So right. and that's how I evaluate people, even if I'm helping them. I got to make sure they have a checklist. What are your requirements of me? But then I have certain requirements of you as well. So, you know, everybody has their own requirements about certain things. But dealing with a lot of women on a day to day basis, you know, it is different than handling, you know, projects with me. Okay. Hmm, that's a whole nother subject. I would love to talk about that at, at some point later on. You know, like, 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 how, like, how is it like, like, it would be interesting to know a man's perspective from receiving leadership from a woman versus receiving leadership from a man. Mm -hmm. like, 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 maybe I'll do, I'll do a show about that at some point. Listen, right. listen, you, you done came up with something. Look, Jack, yeah. Jack, look, look. That's the innovativeness in her. You know, the trailblazer in her to say that. You know what? Because it's conversations that need to be heard. You know, yeah. that need to be had with mm -hmm. us uh, as women and men, you know, to really understand why do we put these uh, stipulations on ourselves? Why do we put ourselves in the box? Why do we feel like we have to go through so many hoops? Nobody else really does that, but we feel like we've got to go through so much and uh, we make it harder on ourselves. And a lot of times, you know, you hear being overqualified all the time and people are very challenged by people who are overqualified. And uh, at the end of the day, you don't know by giving them a chance, it can put them into a position where, listen, you got the right person for the job. Overqualification just means that they're going to open up more opportunities, open up more doors to take you to things that you never even thought about. So don't be intimidated by that. Embrace it. Bring them in and let them show you what they can do. Because sometimes your limited capacity is what keeps you stagnant, keeps you in that same place. But to bring somebody else in who has leadership abilities, who is strong and confident in what they can do, bring them in and don't be afraid that maybe they're going to take my place or maybe they're going to be, you know, do it better than I do it. Look at it as collaborating with them, partnering with them to get the absolute best that you can have. And that's how it should be, you know. And Jacqueline, what I love about you is like even this weekend when you're bringing on these different people, you've got powerhouses that are coming aboard Saturday and Sunday. So tell us about the uh, setup for this weekend and uh, the people that you are going to have on the platform. And, and what is it really all about? OK, so again, this particular the leadership symposium takes place three times a year, mm -hmm. uh, January, May and September. This particular one, since the book is set to launch next month in June, I wanted to do a symposium around that same um, thing, the Born to Lead. 
Mm -hmm. So I figured, wow, you know, this the the symposiums themselves is supposed to help individuals or women in business, mm -hmm. right? Be able to level up, you know, personally, professionally, and their, you know, step up or bump up their leadership skills. So I figured this would be perfect to be able to get some high powered women at the table and talk about leadership. And like mm -hmm. you said, talk about a lot of those things that we don't even want to talk about. Like right. some of those, um, some of the, the uh, terminology that goes, that's associated with being a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why, why, does have, why do you have to be bossy? You know what right. I mean? It could be somebody with a vision or it could be someone who's decisive. Mm -hmm. You know, someone who has, like like well, one of the um, exclusive interviews was with uh, Dr. Karen Hills Pruden. I'm gonna make sure mm -hmm. I get her whole name right. And she was saying a part of being a good leader is knowing what you're expecting later on down the line. Like looking at the analytics and and, and looking at the, at the uh, stats and you know making decisions not not just making decisions about what's gonna happen in six months, but where do you see your company in mm -hmm. three years, five years, ten years, fifteen mm -hmm. years? You know that that's a part of leadership. You know, so being able to talk about those things and to be honest with you, like I know what my vision is, but I'll be honest. I said it to her during the interview. I was like, I don't even really, I, I'm not real big on the analytics. You know what I mean? But but she was just like, well, you have to be able to evaluate that. How do you know how people are perceiving, you know, what you're doing or, or what audience you're reaching? And it makes sense, you know, but that's something that I kind of tend to shy away from a little bit. Or right. one of the other things that came up was um, being a good leader is knowing about the competition, you know, and not, not in a, you know, nosy or want to copy type of way, but just to know what other people out there, what type of services they're providing. You know, Absolutely. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that it came up about communication, the importance of communication and being a good leader, the importance of being able to follow you know what I mean? A good leader needs well, to be a good leader, leader should be able to follow. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and this it was just cool. So having a different individual, so she's participating. Let me see who else took a seat at the table. Uh Nat Nadia Francois. Yes. Um, Dr. Nikita Davis. Uh, let's see, Kern Cherry, mm -hmm. um, JJ Conway. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to remember. Uh Renee Huffman. Mm -hmm. Honey, you got some you got some heavy hitters in here who are out here doing some things. Yes. And I think that, um, it, right? Yes, exactly. And I think it's great because it gives you an opportunity to really see women who are forging ahead in their own respective lanes. Yeah. And what you said earlier about, you know, competition and, and being aware of your competition. Right. You know, I was taking a class and uh, you know, the gentleman was saying you should punch up not down meaning that you need to look at somebody who's ahead of you and see what they're doing and see how they're being successful and it's not to say that you want to mimic what they do but at the same time look and see where your weaknesses are and how you can improve how are they relating like you said communicating to their customers you know how are their how are their systems in place what are their processes because you don't want to beat up on the person that's that's not where you're at you want to help them to grow and pull them up. But mm -hmm. if you're looking to be inspired, then you're looking at the um, Karen Hill Prudence, the current cherries, you know, you're looking at um, the Renee Huffman's, you're looking at people who are out here already showing you how they're doing things. And you want to look at them to say, it's an inspiration and let me see what you're doing because it can help you and, and guide you. And not to say that you want to imitate them, but you want to learn because right. at the bottom line, you want to be in a position and a leader is going to be someone who's not intimidated by people checking them out. Yep. Period. And they can do it all the time. Absolutely. They, they can the give time. you a this they can they can embrace your success without mm -hmm. dimming their light. Yep. Exactly. And Come on, Matthew, you're so I know you want to say something oh. about that. Go <laughs> I, I go through it every day. You know, with people coming to me for advice and wanting to help them, some people get mad. And, you know, because so many people have turned them off, they're like, okay, well, you know, how much are you going to charge me? What is this? What is that? Are you really going to give me what I'm looking for? So I, you know, coach women all the time with, no matter anything that they need help with, business, whatever, personal life, 
I am a women empowerment influencer, so I help you transition to where you are to where you want to be. And as a leader, I can help you and guide you through that. So one young lady came to me and wanted to do her own business in publishing. So Angela and I have our own publishing company. So I coached her how to do that. She said so many people have steered her wrong and told her a lot of the wrong information. And I'm hearing that a lot as I'm coaching a lot of people. People are afraid that somebody's going to level up and surpass them. And it's that person's mindset. They're not willing to go from that fixed mindset because that's all they know. Some people are out here uh, are scared to grow and move forward. So they're going to stay and stay where they're at. Unlike me, I'm going to throw the books at you. I'm going to make sure you're understanding everything that I'm telling you and giving you. And then we're going to go back. You tell me what I just told you and show me as if you're teaching somebody else. So it's all about that person's mindset. You got to be able to grow and shift because if you don't, you're going to stay stuck. So when people are reaching out for, if you're reaching out for uh, to somebody for help, Make sure you evaluate everything. Don't just stop and get it from that one person. Go to multiple uh, resources and double check to make sure you're not going down the wrong direction. That's good. That's good. You know what else, too? And this really kind of bothers me is that I think sometimes people recite those buzzwords, mm-hmm. uh, collaboration, precious competition, right? Mm-hmm. They say mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But then their actions show something totally different. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, like I'm in a season now where I'm 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 using my discernment. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of times like I have it, I'll feel something mm-hmm. when I interact with somebody, but a lot of times I'm like, oh well, you know, they haven't really done anything or da, da, you know what I mean? And I kind of push it to the side. But this this is I'm I'm not doing it anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it anymore. That's good. And, 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 you know, again, you said the buzzword, the key word, discernment. I believe that for leaders, leaders have a built in discernment to see bigger pictures and to understand motives. And the thing about it is sometimes you have to look at it from uh, both sides because somebody who's ambitious and who's trying to move up and be noticed and be seen and get their work out there doesn't necessarily mean they're competing against you. And you need to be as a leader, um, have enough grace and enough um, understanding that that really has nothing to do with you. A lot of times we get caught up in the wrong things. And I know that, you know, when you talk about leadership, um, John Maxwell, I guess is probably the, the uh, pinnacle of leadership when it comes down to, you know, all the books that he's written, you know, all the programs he's had, the way that people, you know, uh, recite and quote him, you know, for things he said about leadership. But women, I believe, and and let's just go back to the anthology that you spoke of, that you're the visionary uh, author, uh, visionary author for, you know, it's all about leadership. And so I'm blessed to be connected to Jacqueline and have an opportunity to be in that project. And for me, you know, I think about it. Women are born, you know, when we say born to lead, we're born to lead because for one, women have the capacity to have children. So you've got to be able to lead your child. If nothing else, you've got to be able to make decisions even when you don't have a uh, instruction manual. You know, you automatically start moving and doing things because it's instinctive to you. And for leaders, it causes you to step into arena sometimes where you may not always know, but you use the resources that you have. Like uh, uh, Karen said, and maybe that's not your strong point, but then you find someone who can help you to understand those things so that you know how to take it to the next level, how to read that to make your business better, how to read that to help your employees or your team become better. So we've got so many things. And I think Jacqueline, it's amazing that you do this three times a year because leadership is honestly something that that you need to understand Mm -hmm. as you move forward in life. And if you can master it, it's going to serve you well in every area of your life. That's right. And the thing is, you... You can always learn how to be a more effective leader, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, and it's something about being open, being open to learning. Mm -hmm. You know, you might like, let's just say, Angela, you, you know, both of us, let's say lead. okay, but you, your strong points might be 
A, B, and C. My strong points may be um, C, D, and E. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you can always learn more about how to be a more effective leader. And that if you notice that, because you know, I'm a firm believer that that it trickles down. You know, that the the the, the leader or the person at the top, so to speak, you know, sets the tone. Mm -hmm. So if your employees aren't taking things serious or aren't, I don't know, doing what you want them to do, you know, let's just say, then you have to really look at, you have to take a look at yourself. You know, and of course it could just be some bad apples in the bunch, but you have to take a look at yourself. Am I effectively communicating? Am I, you know, making myself available? Am I recognizing what their strengths are? You know, just different things along those lines. So that's why I think it's so important to have these forums and to have these conversations. Because like it or not, we are all leaders. Mm -hmm. Whether I don't care if you want to sit in the back or, you know, you want to stay behind the scenes or maybe you afraid to say, yes, I did it. You know, I'm proud of myself, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as we think it's boastful, you know. But there's nothing boastful about, you know, hey, I did it. Absolutely. You, know. and you should celebrate. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate your wins. Celebrate the wins of your team. And when you talk about leadership, you have to lead yourself first. So that makes us all leaders in some way. And the best thing about it is leading yourself well. And that means showing up for opportunities and tapping in and listening to people who are in positions like so you can glean information from what they're saying. So that's why this symposium is so good for this weekend, because you're giving a lot of women opportunities to share what they've been through, what they've been able to overcome. How did they overcome it? Those things are very important because you know what? Why reinvent the wheel? A lot of times we want to start from scratch and we want to do it our way. But if somebody else has been out there and they've done it, you don't have nobody. Listen, McDonald's and Burger King, I'm pretty sure they didn't say, oh, yeah, no, I, I don't even want to know how they got started. Let me figure out what do I do with this meat? Oh, yeah, let me fix it to a patty. No, figure out the processes that are already out there and then shorten the learning curve. That's what happens when you're tapping into a group of leaders who are in a symposium giving you some tips and some, some strategies to help you in your business. You can learn a lot when you're putting yourself and giving yourself a seat at the table. And when I say that, this is a virtual conference. So now your seat can be right at your own home in your own comfortable uh, attire, drinking or sipping on or eating whatever you want, but still you're able to tap into some wisdom and some strategies that can help you in your business. And you never know one person can give you a key that can transform your whole business. And it's about really sitting back and, um, paying attention to what's being said and then implementing that in whatever you have going on. That's right. So Jacqueline, we want to say, you know, come out to recognize, you know, the important things. And on the Queens um, round table, you really do have great topics to really talk about. Mm -hmm. That's really going to push people, open their minds up to see ways to do things better. Like you said, you're empowering people, you know, to step out and be the best version of themselves. And, what I love about you is you don't just talk about it. You be about it. You're out here actually in the trenches doing the same thing that you're telling other people to do. You're not just saying do, do, do. You're out here, you know, getting on platforms. You're out here, you know, opening up doors with your uh, because you have your uh, you have your own channel. So you're out actually offering people opportunities to pursue their passion, to tap into, you know, what they want to do. So you're <clears throat> someone who definitely needs to celebrate herself for all that you're doing right now for everybody who is tapping in now and for those who are getting ready to, you know, position themselves in business to do some of the things that you're already doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if they are interested, you know, even if you're not taking the seat, well, it's not too late. You can still, you can pull up a seat, right? You can mm -hmm. pull up a seat at the table this uh, Saturday and just kind of check out some of the exclusive interviews. If you miss it, you can go back and, you know, watch it again. And, you know, just, just take, like Angela said, just take advantage of it. You know, sitting in, in your, in the privacy of your own home, you know, you don't have to have your uh, camera, you know, you know what I mean? You're in the privacy of your own home. You can listen to it again. You can, you know, take all the notes you want, you want to take. I mean, and you're going to get something from everybody. Even if you just took one, and I'm sure there'd be more than one, even if you just took one thing from each exclusive interview mm -hmm. you can really use that because i'm telling you even doing these interviews 
I've learned a lot. Right. A lot of things I hadn't even really considered. Mm -hmm. you know, so, And that's the key. You know, being around people like that, it opens your mind up. Because like you said, sometimes mm -hmm. you, you're so busy with your head down. You know what they say, grinding and hustling. You miss right. out on a lot of things that can really help you in your business. Mm -hmm. And Matthew, you know... Um, I'm glad you're on here because like you said, you have a lot of people that come to you and you get to hear the side of them, you know, being frustrated or irritated. But when you're able to share, you know, some tips and tools and strategies with people, it can really change how, you know, they feel about business. Cause a lot of times people give up because they're overwhelmed mm -hmm. and all they had to do was really just keep on, you know, maybe tap into somebody, find a mentor, find a coach, find somebody who can help them give them some information that can really just make a difference. And that's what a lot of people, they are afraid to ask because they're afraid to hear no. A lot of people don't want to ask anybody because they're afraid to say no. And then two, if they do ask, they're afraid that that person is not going to give them that correct information because somebody else they mm -hmm. asked previously gave them the wrong information. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard that I was talking to somebody earlier today and, you know, they were just making a comment about, you know, it's so hard to ask people for help because they either going to give them a half, half of the information or they're going to act like they don't really know. And I think it's such a, uh, it's so sad when we, and I see Miss Jaria says so true. I think it's very sad that we have to deal with that. You mm -hmm. know, bottom line, if you have information, then give it to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nothing wrong with it. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to take anything away from you. We should be in a position now where we're willing to give information and give it freely because we've got access to Google and things. And I think people feel like, oh, well, you know, just go look it up. But why would you want somebody to do that when you have, because what the Bible says, don't put off doing uh tomorrow what you can do today mm -hmm. if somebody comes to you and needs some assistance stop trying to hoard it all to yourself because at the end of the day i think matthew you had put up a post you know when they had the, the uh rope you know you're holding on so tight to the rope mm -hmm. that you're gonna be causing yourself more pain more anxiety more stress mm -hmm. you're hold yourself back versus being free to give people information because again what god has for you is for you and if you believe that principle, giving somebody else information is not going to take away from what God already has for you to do. Oh. That's right. That's why every time somebody comes to me, I'm telling you firsthand, I'm about to get on your last nerve. I tell people all the time, once you um, start hanging around me, I'm going to brainwash you into believing in yourself. Because I'm going to teach you everything that I know, everything I have learned. Everything that I'm coming across, I'm sharing it with somebody. It's going to help somebody. So it's, it's easier for me to do that because the mindset that I'm in and then, you know, some things are given to me. So as it's given to me, I'm pouring it back out to other people. And a lot of people still don't understand that. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, it, it's, you know, I know, I know this is, this is a whole nother subject, but um, sometimes you know, I'm not going to lie. It's been a little discouraging at times, mm -hmm. you know, just to just to see people um, that aren't even trying to hide the, the simple fact that they just simply just so blatantly in it for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, just, you know, so it, I've, I've seen some things over these past mm -hmm. three years or so, you know, but what I you know what I do? I don't let it change me. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's but what I do is I make a mental note of it, you know, mm -hmm. that, okay, this is not somebody that I'm going to, that I want to work with again. Right. You know, simple as that. No, mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't got to run and tell nobody about it. Now, somebody asked me mm -hmm. directly, then I'll say, well, I, I didn't have such a good experience, yeah. you know, something along those lines, you know. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I definitely know those that, that have supported me. Mm -hmm. you know, I think too in this online space, sometimes it's easy to present one way, you know, like people present this whole image and oh, you know, da, da, da. then you talk to them and you be like, are you like a twin or like, who is this other person that was? Where's the representative that I was talking to earlier? Because yeah. I don't want this one right here. Give me the representative <laughs> that I talked to earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, so when you find good good people, and I'm, you know, I'm like that too. Person, you know, I, a lot of times, and I know I'm, I'm selling myself short. I never really consider myself 
you know, one to be telling, oh, we do this and do this, you know, that kind of thing. Because I'm, I'm learning myself. Mm -hmm. But what I do know, I'll tell you. Like, if you want to know, well, what do you think about StreamYard? Oh, well, I use StreamYard. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can I can tell you I can tell you what I like, what I don't like, mm -hmm. what my experiences have. You know, what my experiences have been. You know, so I don't, I don't, I definitely don't really get into that. If I, if I don't tell you, you know, or somehow telling you is going to, you know, have some sort of impact on, you know, what I'm doing over here. You, right. you know what I mean? That, that's, that doesn't even make sense to me, but, but I, but well, I. See, leaders have a different mentality, you know, as a leader, yeah. you think differently. You understand that that doesn't have anything to, that's not going to impact you one way or the other by sharing information. Yeah. So. Again, Jacqueline, I know that we're running up on time because I know uh, as mm -hmm. y'all heard me read her bio, so that just means that she's got another program to do after this one. So I want to make sure she's got a little time in between time, you know, to uh, relax a little bit before she goes to the next one. But before we let you go, I want you to, again, just share with everybody about what's going on this weekend, what you have coming up, and any final words you want to share about leadership. Okay, so... I guess my final, I'll, I'll start off with the final words about leadership. That we as women, like, you know, the I know everybody's throwing that term around, black girl magic and black excellence, you know, but I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe that that we all, as, as African-American women, have it in us. Mm -hmm. Now, it's just a matter of sometimes feeling that we're worthy. Or sometimes feeling that we have a right, that we belong at the table, you know. Um, I think it's a I think it's in us, but it just has to some some of us it takes a little bit longer, you gotta do a little bit more work to right. pull it out, you know, or maybe refine it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I want you to know. Believe me, stop shrinking in the back, stop feeling like, oh, I don't wanna be seen as bossy, I don't wanna be seen as this, you know, put that leadership hat on and get it done. Get it done and do do what you gotta do. And whatever whatever business you have, I don't I don't care if it's a coaching business, if you make candles, you got a boutique, um, you wanna open up a fitness club, whatever. You know what I mean? You have it in you. You have all of the skills that, that you need inside of you. And it's just a matter of, of of getting the right mentorship and the right support and just keeping an open mind and taking taking it all in and being able to refine those skills. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want women to know in reference to leadership. Yes, and as far as this weekend, so the actual symposium is going to take place. It's going to run all day on Saturday, the 21st. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, and, and it's set up, the way it's set up is going to be a, a series of exclusive interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned some of the names earlier, but we, I'm going to sit down with each individual. We're going to talk, talk honestly about leadership, what some of their challenges were. Um, what what are some of the good qualities of a leader? What did their uh, mentorship looks like? You know, like some, sort of their leadership journey. We're going to talk about that, you know, very transparent conversations. Mm -hmm. But I believe that each one of them will give you some tangible tips and tools to be able to use to truly scale your business. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, that's going to be all day on the Saturday, the 21st. And you can catch us on Facebook, my my business page, the Realizing Your Potential One Two Three, LinkedIn, which is under Jacqueline Kabai Harrison, or either YouTube, which is under Jacqueline Kabai Harrison. You can catch us because we'll be streaming. You know, we'll stream live. And Sunday, the twenty second, we have two panels. The panel at three p.m. again is going to be streamed live. The same um, places. And that is going to be specifically for the co-authors. It's not all of the co-authors. Unfortunately, they're not all able to make it. But for those that are participating in the project, they're going to be talking about leadership and why they chose this project and why people want to make sure they get the book. And then another panel is at four. And those are other uh, headliners and speakers, again, talking about leadership for those that were not able to make the panel on May the 8th. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what's to come. So uh, having said, with that being said, make sure you follow me on Facebook and realizing your potential uh, one, two, three. That way you'll know every time we're getting ready to go live. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Again, scrolling through the bottom, Jacqueline Kabah Harrison, realizing uh, your potential, 123.com is the site. Follow her on Facebook at the Realizing Your Potential uh, 123 so you can keep up with what's going on. Because again, she is a trailblazer. She is a leader. She is someone out here that you want to watch because she's really empowering other women to be the best version of themselves. Matthew, did you have any final words before we end the broadcast? I just want to give a shout out to Jacqueline. Make sure you all follow her. You don't want to miss out on all these opportunities and the doors that she will help you open. Go follow her now. Thank all you. right. Well, Jacqueline, much success to you. I look forward to uh, the platform this weekend. I know it's going to be full of great information. So until then, we will see you soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you again. And have a have a good you know rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you so much. So everyone, again, we thank you for tuning in. Please make sure you follow Jacqueline Kabai Harrison. She is, like Matthew said, somebody you need to know and you need to go ahead and follow her right now. Okay, y'all be blessed and we will see you again next week. Have a good one.